from Kawali or this. That's not, that's fake too. Love for the Holy Prophet, like said to us, and I'm speaking about people who are in tariqah. You must put that one who the Prophet has put to you on top of your head and to love that one. Once you're starting to love your guide, your Shaykh, definitely you start loving those whom he loves. And he loves the Holy Prophet. You will learn what that love is. Because you're not taking it from yourself, you're taking it from others. You're taking it not from your ego, you're taking it from a source of haq. You're taking it from an inheritor of the Prophet. Then you start changing your life, you start changing your lifestyle. You start having more sunnats. Everything that you are doing in your life, in your actions, in your thoughts, in your desires, you're going to remember Prophet You're not just going to remember him in only in a mahfil, only in a milad, only in a kawali. Then after that, you go back to nationalism, or you go back to dunya, or you go back to politics. No. You can be speaking about all these things, but you're going to remember the Holy Prophet as well. Majority of the people, they don't have that skill. They cannot. Only Shaykh Afani is teaching us that. Seriously, we cannot. He can talk about politics of today and link it to the history and to the Holy Prophet But this is the thing, people are believing that this world is disconnected from Allah. We have to change ourselves, it's not Allah, it's not going to change us. But where do you think that change is coming from? Ourselves? That time you're making a shirk. It is coming from Allah, you have to ask help from Allah. And you have to go according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put for you. Not, a, not according to your own way. So when the parents, they don't have proper love, how are the children, they're going to have love? Because it hasn't passed their throats yet. It hasn't sunk to their hearts. Once it sinks to their heart now, and the heart is beating, and the whole body now becomes alive because of that love, now you're going to teach your children very simple things, very simple sunnats. You don't even have to tell them, this is sunnat of the Rasulullah you must love him. No. You doing it, you have that light of the Prophet Every sunnat that we carry is giving light to us. And the child is going to see that. You think 1400 years, although Muslims have always been educated, you think for 1400 years, Majority of the people, the Muslims, they are super educated like, the, like what we have today? No, they were not. They were not even educated necessarily about Islam. But they were living Islam. They don't have to go to classes of Aqidah or conferences to learn about the pearls of Islam. They were living that. They were not doing anything else other than that. How do you think that love then comes? That there are still so many people today in certain societies. They don't know what they're doing. They know it's right, but it's actually sunnah. Because once you start putting that sunnah into your lives, you start giving the rights of the Prophet and start giving the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're not looking at your rights, you're looking at their rights first. Your heart will be soft because of that. And that your children can easily pass. It's not just about bringing your children here, telling them stories about the Prophet and the Sahabis and everything. You cannot compete with that too. Even if you gather your children, you tell them stories about what happened in his life, what happened in the companion's life, they go on that internet and they hear Millions of other stories that's more interesting than the story you tell them. You understand? Of course, we have to learn the history. Of course, we have to teach the children these are the events that happen. But it is making the events alive that is going to give life to that love. Not just to say these are the things that's in books. We celebrate every year Karbala here, correct? 
But we're looking at Karbala and we're looking at what is happening today, this year, that connects us to that, not just to look at Karbala as an isolated incident. But Karbala is happening every single day. This is something I've seen only Shaykh Andy do. And he's asking us every year, what are you? Are you a Yazidi or are you a Husseini? Are we standing on the way of Haq, even knowing that we are going to be killed? And this especially applies to us now. Or are we going to be on the side of Yazidis or those ones who betray, thinking, well, I have to save my life. Saving my life is the most important thing. And they lose their faith, they lose this dunya, and they lose the hereafter. Yes, it is not just a matter of salawats too. Now, we're looking at everything is here, it is a lifestyle. Bring them to the dargah. Because now, you can be in the dargah. I'm not saying we're doing everything 100%, far from it. We're not doing anything 100%. And what we're doing also, we cannot compare with what those ones are doing 100 years ago. But, we have our sheikh in front of us. And we have his presence here very strong. And we have some discipline to other people. It's so much discipline, they are scared even to come here. But to us, it's nothing, and it's some discipline. We know, for instance, how to enter into the bathroom, alhamdulillah. We know how to eat properly. We know how to have manners. So now, you want to teach the love of the Prophet ﷺ to your kids? First, teach them manners. When they know how to sit, when they know how to be quiet, when they have respect, they will have love. You cannot have love if you don't have manners and respect. That kind of love, it is only shaitanic, selfish love. So, if the parents are not taught, then you cannot teach the children. If the parents are taught, even when they're not teaching the children, the children they're going to understand and they're going to pick it up. Because when we have the maulit here, for instance, it is, you know, the mehfil that we have here is completely different from the mehfil that you have outside. For one thing, sohbat is important. There's no sohbat in mehfils. You come, come in, imagine now if you're a kid and you don't understand nothing, you understand how boring it is? Do you know how boring it is? If you're a kid, now you're a teenager, and your parents, they're not opening up, they're not seeing everything, they're not showing the beauty of the Prophet ﷺ through their lives, through their understanding, through their actions, and through their manners. You know how boring it is for someone to just sit and everyone is reciting salawat and everyone is pretending to cry and you have to pretend to cry and you're dying to get out, that is, it just becomes another habit. It didn't sink, it didn't go past your throat yet. Then thinking, oh love to the Prophet then is, I just have to have this overwhelming emotional uh, response to it, then that is love. That is not love too. When I get very emotional and they see, oh, this one cries a lot, so that must be love. This one gets up and does crazy things, so that must be love. Then you're not looking at the Prophet you're not looking at Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, you're not looking at Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman and Hazrat Ali, how they are showing their love to the Prophet All you have, you're showing, is just your own style. Sohbat, it is important. With a sohbat, then we can live. If there's no sohbat, you don't know how to take what to take, and you don't know how to apply it in your life. That time you can have the Qur'an in front of you, but you're not going to believe. With a sohbat, we don't have to have the Qur'an, because a sohbat, it is Qur'an. There's one lady that came to the Shaykh Afani one time on 39th Street, and one of the first times I saw Shaykh Afani speaking in a very jalal way, she was saying something, arguing with Shaykh Afani back and forth in one, and Shabani just say very strongly, says, whatever I'm speaking, it is Qur'an, it is Hadith. Yeah. Some people think, oh, it's just a Sufi thing to say. But 
the Sohbat, it is about opening up the Quran. It is about opening up the Hadith. It is about understanding how to serve our Lord, understanding the words that He has sent, understanding the words and the actions of the Holy Prophet. We're not talking about anything else. But if you don't have the Sohbat, now how are you going to understand the Quran? That's why everyone takes the Quran, they memorize it, but they're going to go to hell. Because they're going to memorize it and give meaning to it according to their nafs. This much is enough, Fatiha. <laughs>